We're excited to have you join us for the Come Follow Me 2021 podcast and study of the Doctrine and Covenants, hosted by Rod Meldrum and Jonathan Neville, and presented by Gospel Doctrine Answers. In today's podcast, we will study Doctrine and Covenants 10 and 11, that you may come off conquer. Welcome, everybody, to our uh, this edition of the Come Follow Me uh, 2021. And uh, we are working on the Doctrine and Covenants here with my dear friend and, uh, and, and accomplice here, basically, <laughs> Jonathan Neville. So uh, we have, uh, this week is the uh, lesson number six, and this is involving the Doctrine and Covenants sections, I should say, 10 and 11. So um, a couple of quick things about these uh, sections that I think would be uh, important to uh, to point out. And we're yeah. going to Jonathan's actually got a, a real nice uh, set of graphics and so forth that we're going to be able to uh, utilize because it's hard to visualize some of these things. It is, yeah. So in uh, section ten, uh, right at the very beginning, it basically says it was a translation, um, and uh, because this is this is the time of when Martin Harris had lost 116 right. pages. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're going to be, be kind of talking a little bit about that, about the 116 page loss and so forth. Yeah. The evil design of there were people who were going to take those, alter them, and then say, "Well, when Joseph Smith retranslates the, right. the, the 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 plates, basically that he'd translated, then they won't match up, and then it'll show that Joseph Smith really didn't know what he was doing. There was right. you know, that he wasn't really doing a translation. Actually, it kind of tells you a little bit more that it was actually a translation because if he was just reading off a stone in a hat." Clearly, whoever was that was putting the the, the, the English language right. character, you know, words on the stone could have done just the same thing again. Right. Of course, then it would have been altered, and then it would have been the, the same same <laughs> problem. So, right. So, so anyway, he said, but, it, but he says in verse one, he's to translate by means of the Urim and Thummim. So again, uh, using the Urim and Thummim here, this is to, uh, to address that, and then we're just going to go ahead and, and just jump into um, this whole. Concept now, folks, uh, buckle up because uh, <laughs> this is probably something yeah. you more than likely have not heard. I would guess that probably ninety nine point nine five percent of the church membership have not heard of the things that we're going to be yeah, talking about not. here, and that is that uh, how many sets of plates were there? Yeah. Okay. So let's, should we dive so in? let's j- jump right into it. So Jonathan, you go ahead and, and uh, let's start off with this. Okay. So well, right right here on the screen, you can see there's a. Um, the, the cover page of this week's lesson, and it, it says, Recording impressions while reading the scriptures is like planting seeds. Even small impressions can lead to meaningful personal revelation. And we're going to look at just a few of the, of the verses in these sections, and it's like planting seeds, because it will completely change your understanding of, of how Joseph and Oliver worked with the plates, where they came from, and so on. So the first one we want to look at is the very first verse here. It says, Now behold, I say unto you that because you delivered up uh, those writings which you had power given unto you to translate by means of the Urim and Thummim, like Rod just said, mm-hmm. throughout the scriptures, the Lord reiterates the importance of Joseph translating with the Urim and Thummim. The special instrument, yes. Right. But uh, because he gave up those writings into the hands of a rick- wicked man, you have lost him. That was Martin Harris, as we just talked about. So he lost them for a period of time. Now, we wanted to go back a little bit just to review the history of the plates so you can understand why it's so important to know which plates he lost. Right. Or which, and these which details are just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So in, it was in September of 1827, Joseph Smith and Emma returned to Palmyra from Harmony so that Joseph could uh, receive the plates. You can see how here's their little path up to, to Gomorrah in Palmyra. So Joseph went to the hill, got the plates... Now, this is one of the most famous depictions in, in art. And you can see it looks like they're in a jungle or something. So we thought we'd show you some of the photographs from the late 1800s to give another perspective of what Kamora looked like. <laughs> and, and you can see there's this kind of a dirt. <laughs> Pretty much road. a denuded hill, yeah, uh, bearing yeah. a tree on it. Yes. And there, we know there were trees on there when Joseph got the plates because they talked about that. But it wasn't heavily forested, apparently. Yeah. But I put this passage in here because this was in early 1827, before he and Emma went went to get the plates, and he had been in Manchester. He was coming home late one night, and his father wanted to know why he was late and what had happened. So his mother wrote down this conversation. Mm-hmm. And he, Joseph said to his father, Stop, Father, stop. It was the angel of the Lord that stopped me. Yeah, that's, 
It says. It's actually in the history. Oh, that Lucy Max, that's, that's Smith, one history of Joseph Smith by his mother, Lucy yeah. Max Smith. That's where this is, one of the places yeah. this is recorded. And it's right in the Joseph Smith papers. You can read this. Yeah. So he said, it was the angel of the Lord. As I passed by the hill of Cumorah, where the plates are, the angel met me and said I had not been engaged enough in the work of the Lord. So this was before he even actually had taken possession of the plates, before he had translated anything, that Moroni had called it the hill of Cumorah. Because that's what it was called. Yeah, there's been, there have been uh, people who have s- claimed that the word Camorra was never even used right. in this yeah. early part of the church yeah. history. Well, people claim everything. That, <laughs> <laughs> usually yeah. people claim stuff that confirms their biases. But right, you, can, yeah. you can read. Lucy didn't yeah, just right refer to this. She quoted it. Yeah. She remembered the conversation. Okay, anyway, yeah. so here's another picture from the same era where there's a little boy standing or sitting on the hill Camorra looking north. And I circled in red here, roughly the area where the Joseph Smith farm was, to give you an idea of how far he had to walk and so forth. Mm-hmm. And, of course, this is farmland at the time of the, the Nephites and the Jaredites. It, it could have looked similar. Yeah. It could have been more trees. But you can see how from the top of Cumorah, you had a commanding view all the way around. Yeah. You could easily see massive battles going right. on through there. Yeah. Or not so massive, depending on what you think. <laughs> the final okay. great battle. Of the yeah, the final yeah. great battle. Yep. So, what was in the box? Now, this is another depiction that shows a, kind of a foresty thing. But the point is, there was a stone box that Moroni had built. Yeah. And inside, here's an artist's depiction. Joseph and Oliver both described this. And Oliver described it in a lot did, more did detail. Did they than describe Joseph. the size somewhat? Yeah, he, well, he described how it was constructed, about how yeah. big it was, and so on. And he said inside there was the um, plates, the breastplate, and interpreters. For the and a couple of little, like, Stone well, they're, they're on stone pillars. Yeah, stone yeah, pillars, stone pillars, stone feet kind of thing. But that's that's a roughly how big it was. And there's other artist depictions of all three of these items. <laughs> we, I didn't want to belabor the point of what they all looked like, but the point is there were these three things in the box. Mm-hmm. Here's some some of the descriptions of the plates. Well, just one, one thing, just some right. people say that there was the sort of labor was in the box too, yeah. but that doesn't look yeah. like that would fit in there. Unlikely, and they didn't. Okay. They never said it was in there. Yeah. Other people said that later. Yeah. But Joseph and Oliver never said that. They never mentioned anything about this. Or the Liahona yeah. wasn't in there either. Good point. Okay. And we'll find out where those were in a minute. <laughs> okay. So, they, uh, Orson Pratt, Joseph Smith himself said it had the appearance of gold. David Whitmer said golden plates. It's kind of an adjective rather than necessarily a literal material. Mm-hmm. And William Smith said it was a mixture of gold and copper. And there's a, another. Uh, affirmation of that from Josiah Stowell, who right. claimed he saw the corner and it was greenish in hue. Greenish, okay. yeah. which, shows, which means that there's some some copper that has right. basically uh, gotten in there. Gotten there, yeah. Uh, William Smith said it weighed about sixty pounds. Other people did. Joseph's father weighed it on a scale, the ones he saw, and said thirty pounds. So oh, that's a big difference. Yeah, then. it's a big difference. And then Joseph said they were six by eight inches, something six inches in diameter, roughly the size of these plates we have here, here down there. the table. Is it there? That's a, a resemblance of it. 60 pounds. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we okay. go. Okay. So the, the question is, what was in the plates? We already talked about what was in the box. Now what was in the plates? Yeah. What was on the actual plates? Yeah. Says. Okay. So the title page explains. And the title page says, I know everybody watching this has memorized the entire title page. So, <laughs> so I won't read the whole thing. But I'm going to highlight the part in color. Yeah. It says, Wherefore is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi, sealed by the hand of Moroni. And it was an abridgment taken from the book of Ether also, which was Jared. a record of the people of the Jared. People mm-hmm. of Jared. So there's three components of what was in the plates. And here's a summary of it. Uh, there's an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi, abridgment of the record of the people of Jared, and it was sealed by Moroni, which means he added his... Uh, Last few right. chapters. Mormon was the one that basically did the abridgments, the, the abridgements right. one and right. two. So we can see real clearly exactly what was in the plates, mm-hmm. according to the title page. It's like a table of contents, essentially, yeah. table, the title page is. Which Joseph so, said was, uh, was found that it was the last was The last leaf of the leaf. plates. Yeah. And anciently, people would put the table of contents at the end for some reason. But that, it isn't only the plates, it's other ancient... No, when you don't have a computer to work with, <laughs> yeah. you, you can't just go back into the beginning and, and start. So I think <laughs> I guess so. So, That's I think get, when they get down to the end, they had to write down, okay, this is what we ended That's up with. That's a really good point, yeah. So by the, by the time they're done compiling it, they say, okay, now we know what's in here, now we can say what's in there. Yeah. Okay. So I, I depict it this way. The title page, 
And then there was, it explains that these were what were in there. There was the abridged record of the people of Nephi, Book of Lehi, Mosiah, Alma, and so forth. You know all these uh, mm -hmm. contents. So that's what he picked up from Moroni. Right. Then, now Mormon also said, in Mormon 6.6, 6, that he made this record out of the plates of Nephi and hid up in the Cumorah all the records that had been entrusted to him. So Sounds like all the rest of the records. Yeah, so not all just, the original records. Yeah, not just this set of records. He didn't put those in. He didn't put those This was like the on the Hill Cumorah. Right. These other ones were in the Hill Cumorah. Well, this is in the Hill Cumorah. They're both right. in the Hill Cumorah. They're in different departments. Mm -hmm. the, the point here, though, is he says, I hid up in the Hill Cumorah all the records of the Nephites, except for these plates I gave to my son. Mm -hmm. And then Moroni, as we already saw, finished it. Right. Then Moroni took those few plates and put them in the stone box. Okay, and I know that there's those who argue that the Hill Cumorah in New York is not the Hill Cumorah they're talking about here. Yeah, so it's no. a different one someplace down in Central America or South America or someplace yeah. in whatever. But uh, but it sure seems like this is the Hill Cumorah when you, when the Joseph Smith talked about. And yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, that's what Moroni called it, so that's what Joseph Smith called it, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, what was in the Camorra repository? We talked about what was in the stone box. That mm -hmm. was Moroni's stone box. Moroni made a stone box to put the what? Your thumb? Breastplate? Plates. plates. Three mm -hmm. things were in there. Yep. And the, the plates contained three things. Record of Nephites, record of Jared, Jaredites. and Moroni's ceiling. Mm -hmm. So... Remember threes. <laughs> okay. So now, what was in this repository that Moroni, or Mormon wrote about? Yeah. And we have a, an awesome depiction here of Mormon abridging the plates with Moroni underneath playing with his little army men. Yeah, by and John, John McNaughton is, a, is the artist on this. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful amazing piece of Amazing artist, art. yeah. But this is just to give you an idea. Now, this, the description of this came from Oliver Cowdery also. Because he said he and Joseph Smith went in this repository more than mm -hmm. once. Right. And they, they were plates stacked to the... Uh, I think there was eight different speed. accounts of people right. talking about this repository of records yeah, there was, in, was, in the Hill Camorra in New York. That's yeah. right. It was based on Oliver Cowdery's right. explanation of it. And he said there was a stone shelf that had plates on it. There's a table, just what you see here in the... Right. It had the, the, the Sword of Laban was on the table and so yep. forth as well. Yeah. So... This is what was in the repository. Records piled up on the sides of the walls yeah, and so forth there. Exactly. Yeah. So the repository had all the originals. The stone box had the abridgment. There was not mm -hmm. no mixing between those two. But so before before you move off of that yeah. uh, off that image, I want to just reiterate something and that is that uh, in the words of Mormon as Mormon is doing the abridgment, mm -hmm. he's going through and, he, and and so forth and then he goes and I searched among the other records. Right. And what did he find? Yeah. Plates the small plates of Nephi. Right. So he had been working on the large plates of Nephi. And that's what he was abridging. Right. And then all of a sudden he got, and then I found this, and he says, and I put them with my other record. Right. Now, most people have assumed that that other record meant that he put them and installed them into the three-ring binder right. here. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, the, of the box. But that doesn't make any sense because Nephi made those those records a thousand years before. Right. And the chance of him using the same size and shape and the same hole punch pattern and so forth that he could just install them into his three ring binder, so to speak, so yeah. to speak, doesn't make any sense. But, that's, but it make more sense that he would have set them aside. They were just along with he set them with his other records. Right. Yeah, and and we'll get to yes. that a little more, more later. More. But um, so the and the main point is they weren't in, on the title page, so they weren't in that set of plates. Okay, so you mean you're talking about the small plates? The of small Nephi. plates in Nephi. They were not in the stone box right right and they were not part but of we're going to get to that later so yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> the, well the, okay. the I, we just want to make sure we clarify we're getting a little confused so okay. the repository contained all of the original plates the brass plates they brought from jerusalem yeah, yeah. had the plates of lephi the large plates of nephi the plates of ether those 24 gold plates that was all in the repository as well as what we call today the small plates of nephi all of that was in the repository, and probably mm. more, but at least that's what we know, because that was right. what was listed in the record. What was in the stone box, that, according to the title page, mm -hmm. was just the abridged records and the sealed plates of ether that yeah. Mara and I wrote. But no original records were in there, because they weren't listed on the title page. Sure. It's like if you, bought a, if you bought a book and it had a title page, and it told you all the things that were, here's a table of contents, 
you expect to find a whole other section in there that's not on the table of contents? Of course not. <laughs> no. you know. So, no. we, right. we, this is all very obvious, yeah. but just like you remember at the beginning of the lesson, it said, if you pay attention to small details, you can have additional understanding of revelation. Yeah. This is, the title page is a very important detail that people overlook, usually. It's the la last thing that was, that was written on before yeah. the whole thing was sealed up in the right. box. And it, it was crucial to understand all this. Okay, so... The plates in the repository stayed in Camorra, in, in Palmyra. The plates from Moroni's box, Joseph took to Harmony. But because, then, of, because of the persecution that was going on, yeah. so horrible. Well, it was that, and, and he yeah. needed to get away because he had to have peace and quiet in order to translate. And so he arranged with his father-in-law, basically, to move down to Harmony. Is it the wagon, this is the beans? In the yeah, barrel the incident, they put yeah. the, the, the plates in the bottom of a barrel of beans and covered them up, and then people, right. ruffians, would try to... They were looking for, for essentially what would be... For gold. Maybe over a million dollars worth of gold right. in today's terms. Right. And they put them in the beans, and they didn't find them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Miraculously. That's right. <laughs> okay. So the, the point is that the what this uh, drawing slide shows is that what was in the repository is not the same thing as was in Moroni's box. Yeah. Moroni's box was just an abridgment of some of these records. Yeah. And and Mormon even explained, he didn't abridge the small plates of Nephi, he found those after he had already abridged the plates of Lehi, the original plates. Yeah. So here's what was in Moroni's box, Joseph took those to Harmony. Then, so here's the depiction of how they got to Harmony. There's There's a couple of different routes they could have taken. No one knows for sure because they didn't say. But anyway, Harmony was just over the border in Pennsylvania along the Susquehanna River where Emma grew up. So they ended up there. And then this is the priesthood commemoration site. I don't know how many people have been there. But it's a, it's a wonderful place because I'm going to show you just a few of the things. The Isaac and Elizabeth Hale home was here, circled out in red. And then the Joseph and Emma home was down the road. I'm going to show you pictures in just a minute of that. And then the baptismal area, which will be less, next week's lesson, actually, is talks mm -hmm. about the baptism in John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Here's the Isaac Hale home. It's been restored on the original foundations. The church has restored this. But you can, you can see what an impression that would have made on Joseph Smith, because here's yeah. this beautiful girl that lives in this home, right? So, beautiful home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And then, but Isaac Hale wanted to see the plates. And Joseph said, I can't show you the plates. He said, you know, I, I can let you lift the box that they're in, but I can't open it, you can't see the plates. So Isaac Hale said, well, I don't want anything in my house that I can't see and know what it is. So you guys have to move out. Get out, yep. So they moved down the road. Here's, here's the road that goes from uh, Emma's father's house down to this old cabin down the road here. This is what it looks like today. In fact, I was there just about four months ago. Mm -hmm. But... Um, cabin needed a lot of work, but it was livable. And, and this is what it looked like. Okay, I need to explain this slide. In the late 1800s, this is what it looked like. But that whole section on the right was a later addition. Yeah. So the one on the expansion. left. Yeah, an expansion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one on the left was the one where Joseph and Emma lived. And this is what it looks like today. It's all restored. But this is where all of the abridged plates were translated in this little house. And so we have a, a picture that has been restored to look like what people think it looked like at the time. And the church did this? Yeah, the church yeah, did all this. Yeah, yeah. And so, by the way, I, I can tell you, when my wife and I were here right before it opened, the day before it opened, mm -hmm. and they had a barrier across the driveway to get in. And I said, well, we can't come back. So I just drove around the barrier. <laughs> and I went in there, and we acted like we owned the place. <laughs> Like we were supposed to be there. <laughs> but what, what it turned out is there was a, there's a small branch that meets in the chapel here, which uh -huh. is the visitor center. And they were doing the very first tour with the missionaries. Missionaries were practicing the tour. Oh, nice. And so they invited us to join them. So we went on, my wife and I went on the very first tour of the priesthood restoration site from the missionaries. <laughs> it was great. And I'll tell you some things that happened during that tour here in a minute. Yeah. Okay. This is the interior of the home. And they were translating upstairs, probably with Martin Harris. Mm -hmm. And this is one depiction, artist depiction, of the translation of the of what we call now the 116 pages, which was the Book of Lehi. And again, the Urim Thummim plates and um, breastplate. 
So this is an artist's depiction of how he was doing. Now this is not imaginary. This is based on historical accounts. We're going to look at one of those accounts in a minute. Mm -hmm. So all those people that say he used a stone and a hat have there's another version of reality that mm -hmm. we can support here. Okay, so this is the table there. When I was there, I, I looked at this and I said, oh, there's the manuscript, that's roughly the size it was. And I said, well, so what's under the cloth? And the missionaries told me the, the plates. <laughs> so of course I had to peek. <laughs> I had to see what the plates looked like, right? And uh, Be when, the curious one that you are. <laughs> and, then, and then I took a close-up picture of them too. <laughs> And, and this was interesting because since then I've been back, and the missionaries tell me they're not supposed to remove the cloth who even to look at this. Yeah. And I, I talked to missionaries who had been there for over a year, and they'd never seen the place. Seen <laughs> and I thought, what the heck, you guys? You ought to at least take a look. And, and you know, this this brings up another point. Yeah. You know, all Joseph's whole family says, "Oh, we never looked at the plates." You know, yeah. wow, come on. I, you know, William Smith in particular. I'm sure he did, but yeah. So <laughs> that's part of the reason why he kind of testified about it. Too, yeah, right? exactly. You know? He said, "Yeah, it's an alloy." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not supposed to know this, but it's an alloy. <laughs> so then he also, and, and they weighed sixty pounds, which mm -hmm. is another thing. But anyway, so Martin Harris lost the manuscript. Joseph got all upset. Of course, he was he was told he couldn't translate for a while. So well, for a the period Lord of got time, upset too with him. You know, yeah, it seems like to me in there yeah. too. Yeah. And, we, and this is all leading into this section 10, which was this week's lesson. This is yes. all just a preamble to yep. the lesson. All right, so the 116 pages, which was the book of Lehi, was lost by Martin Harris and never been recovered so far. And so Joseph had to give up the, the plates. Here I put in gray to show that it, that it was translated in red, but then it was lost. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I before you before yeah, you leave that just, sure. just just throw in one other thing? Remember, folks, this is from this is actually the abridgment that that Mormon did, which is basically, which he was getting from the the large plates of Nephi, right? The the the, the main set of yep. plates, yep. That he had been working on, and then he went yeah, so down these small right the small set of plates. So yeah. this is this is, this hundred sixteen pages is the more secular account that as Nephi describes yeah. it in the okay. Book of Mormon, yeah. But it was from the original plates and abridgment mm -hmm. from the original plates. Okay. So, here's where the lesson picks this up in DNC 10 and 11. Now, this is after they lost the 116 pages. And as we pointed out before, Joseph had lost the, um, the, the power to translate for a time. But then he got the plates back. He went back to Palmyra, got the plates back, returned back to Harmony again. And this, in the fall of 1828, particularly around... Um, uh, November, because in October he had to work on the farm. November mm -hmm. time frame, he told his mother that he began retranslating. And he had three people work as scribes. He had Emma, his brother, and Martin Harris. All mm -hmm. worked as scribes in that time frame. We don't know how much, who did what. Yeah. Emma was presumably the principal one. That's a little bit about from the fragments and so forth of the uh, original manuscript and things that had been found. That they, have they found? Well, we don't have the writing? original manuscript for Mosiah. For that part, yeah. No. Well, that's right, so, it's 116 pages. Well, no, 116 <laughs> pages was okay. the other. But this is what this yeah. slide shows. So Joseph and Emma began translating from the book of Mosiah, which picked up from where the 116 pages ended. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they started. And then for the period roughly between November and March, they worked on it. But it took a long time. It was slow, hard work, and so on. They had other things going on. So what I call the pre-Oliver scribes, it was uh, Emma, Joseph's brother, and Martin Harris in some mixture. But I think they, they translated most or all of Mosiah. And I have a lot of reasons why other people have reached a similar conclusion. Yeah. I explained it all in detail in this um, Man That Can Translate yeah, yeah, book, this book, which is this book here. There. So there we go. So you can see that. If, if you're interested in it, I, I go through the original manuscript, which is the first Nephi mostly, and a little bit of second Nephi, and then compared to the printer's manuscript. There's lots of detail in there. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it affirms what people said. For example, when asked how long it took to translate the, the plates, uh, David Whitmer said it took eight months. You know, the but traditional they, account is just three months, or, or, April, May, and June. That's what right. we always hear about, three months. Right. But David Whitmer said, no, it was eight months. So if it's eight months, he had to start in November, which he said he did. He mm -hmm. told his mother he did. So November through June is eight months. Mm -hmm. So it works. 
in, in, in the book, you talk about the, uh, the how how many pages per day it worked right. out to and so yeah. forth, and it was pretty pretty yeah. slow. It was going. slow. The two or two or three hours yeah. per each page, basically yeah. at that point. David Whitmer said it was a laborious work, and when they got up to Fayette, they they worked from sunrise to sunset, or yeah. morning to evening, yeah, something morning. like that. Yeah. So long days. Anyway, so th- th- we're still getting up to DNC ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get there. All right. So Oliver Cowdery showed up. In uh, well, no, during the same time where they were translating in the fall, Oliver Cowdery was up in Palmyra teaching and mm-hmm. hearing about Joseph Smith, asking questions and so on. Finally, the Lord appeared to him and said, "You need to go help." So, mm-hmm. Oliver Cowdery left with Samuel Smith. They came down to um, Harmony on April third. Joseph was praying for help to translate because Emma had other things to do. Yeah, and on the fifth, Oliver met Joseph Smith for the first time. In harmony. Then Joseph and Oliver began translating with the Book of Alma because they'd already done Mosiah. So in Alma they start. Here's a depiction of Oliver writing down as Joseph's dictating. Mm -hmm. And then this is something interesting from Oliver Cowdery. He testified in a later proceeding that Joseph Smith found with the plates from which he translated the, the book. So he translated the book from the plates. Two transparent stones resembling glass set in silver bows. That's Yerman a description thumb. of the Yerman thumb. Yeah. yeah. That by looking through these, he was able to read in English the Reformed Egyptian characters which were engraven on the plates. So that's how Oliver Cowdery said as plain as can be. Now, if you look wow. at this carefully, yeah. it doesn't say necessarily that he could read English words, but that he was able to read English as, as a translation process. From the Reformed Egyptian from the, Yeah, from the engravings. Yeah. Which means, if he was seeing Reformed Egyptian characters, was he or was he not using the plates? Well, he had to use the plates, right. That's where he, that's the yeah. only place he would be seeing the Egyptian characters. Right. So, and, and again, Oliver Cowdery reiterated that he translated the book from the plates. Mm-hmm. So, pretty straightforward. Okay, now the scriptures also tell Joseph to translate the engravings on the plates. So, and you can see here's some more artist depictions and so on. So here's where we get to section nine. If you remember, I think it was last week. Yeah, yeah we talked about week. section nine. Yep. And Oliver Cowdery tried to translate, wasn't able to. And what did the Lord say? He said, continue until you finish this record. What was this record? That was your bridge plates. This, this right your here. bridge plates from Moroni's stone box. Yeah. Yep. And then it said, behold, then I have other records I'll give you. Uh, power that you can help them translate. But they had all the plates with them. Yeah, except they did. They're already in. They're already all installed yeah. into, yeah, this, into right. the three ring that's binder. Right. That's right. So what are these other records? Are well, about? that's where we come. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> we've reached DNC ten, and that's okay. what we're going to look at next. <laughs> in the process of doing this translation, Joseph and Oliver reached the end of the abridged plates, got all the way to the end, and they did the title page, which was the last leaf, as we mm-hmm. said, and then. They thought, well, maybe we should go retranslate the Book of Lehi, that the first part of those plates, because that it made sense. They were lost. Let's right. redo it. And yeah. what happened? The Lord said no. The Lord said not to do that. Don't retranslate it. And that's what DNC ten is explaining. Yeah. Why the Lord ex- told Joseph, don't retranslate DNC ten. But there's more than that in that. Yeah. Can you imagine how much was lost though in 116 pages? There? Yeah. Oh my goodness, the, the amount of information that was there. And and there's some scholars think there was actually more than 116. That the 116 pages was what replaced what was in the Book of Lehi. There's a lot of speculation about it, but uh, you know Joseph Smith said it was 116 pages. That's good enough yeah, for me. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, <laughs> um, instead, here's the cool thing: instead of retranslating the Book of Lehi, the Lord told them to translate the plates of Nephi. Yeah, and and there were. Oh wait. Yeah, there's no plates of Nephi. But wait, they're not. They don't have. They didn't have it, and that's what this shows. See, watch this. Okay. If you look at verse 38, Lord says, "And now verily I say unto you that an account of those things that you have written, which was 116 pages, which have gone out of your hands because they were lost, is engraven upon the plates of Nephi." So, and then it says, so "These are the." Small plates of Nephi. Well, we call them the small plates of right. Nephi. Right. So, which, which was the more spiritual account, really, than the, yeah. than the secular account, did, which were the large plates. It didn't of Nephi. get into all the history as much. That's right. Yeah. And then the Lord said, 
therefore, in verse 41 here, therefore you shall translate the engravings which are on the plates of Nephi. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Sounds like right? another translation going on. Yeah, right? and it, it, yeah. it wasn't just translate these things over and underneath a cloth somewhere. He had to translate the engravings. How can you t translate the engravings if you're not looking at the engravings, right? Yeah, right. So, translate the engravings which are on the plates of Nephi down even until you come to the reign of King Benjamin or until you come to that which you have translated, which you have retained. So he had retained a little part. In other words, he and this is digressing a little bit, but mm -hmm. he and, or Martin Harris had translated more than 116 pages, let's say 117 pages. Mm -hmm. But page 117 was not sewn with the rest. Right. So Martin Harris took the 116 pages, Joseph retained page 117, let's say. Or eight, eight. So he knew where they had left off. Yeah, he knew exactly yeah. where it ended. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the Words of Mormon, you can tell the last few verses are part of the, what was he retained. And so we talk about that in these other books. We don't have time to get into that now, but it's awesome if you're, if you're interested in looking yeah. into it. Yeah. So, um, but he told them to, uh, yeah, translate the engravings on the plates of Nephi, and then he says, publish it as a record of Nephi. Okay. So here's the key. They don't have the plates of Nephi. Mm -hmm. All they had was the abridged plates. So what are they going to do, you know? So then, he, the Lord, this is the part you're talking about. There are many things engraven upon the plates of Nephi, which throw greater views upon my gospel. It was just me that you should translate this first part of the engravings of Nephi down to the king, reign of King Benjamin yeah. and send it forth in this work. So there's two different things going on here. It's awesome. And, and I hope all of you are reading DNC 10 to understand this, because there's more references in DNC 10 than I yes, can there is. point out here. Yep. So then... Let's look at this for a minute. It said, he said, send forth in this work. What was this work? This work was the translation of the abridged plates. That's what they had been working on. That's the one the Lord told mm -hmm. in section 9. The Lord told Oliver Cowdery, I want you to continue with this work. And now he says, send it forth with this work. So this work was the, abridged, uh, the translation of the abridged plates. Mm -hmm. And then before that, he says, translate this first part of the engravings of Nephi. What was that? That was, first part of the engravings of Nephi was, we call today, the small plates of Nephi. Yeah. So. It actually says, says that also in verse 39 in, in section 10, yeah. too. Basically, There's five times in there it talks about yeah. it. Yeah. So, first, and these, today in our Book of Mormon is first Nephi through Words of Mormon. The first part of Words of Mormon. And then we can tell from the title page these are not included in the bridge plates. I mean, it's just there. Yeah. So, here's what happens. Where were the plates of Nephi? So, yeah, where did he get those from? Okay. They just well, show up out of nowhere or <laughs> kind of thing? <laughs> where were, the scriptures tell us. It's this awesome. Is, this, this, is, so, this is so fantastic. Both. The, the plates of Nephi, <laughs> even though in section 10 the Lord said, you got to translate the plates of Nephi, the plates of Nephi were back in the repository with all the other original plates. Like we just mm -hmm. talked about that. Mm -hmm. So, here's the thing. In June... The next month, Joseph and Oliver translated the small plates of Nephi in Fayette, New York. You can see on the map here, it has um, the purple circle was the original plates yeah. in the Hill Cumorah. In green, it's in Fayette now, where they're translating the plates of Nephi. And blue is where they translated the abridged plates in Harmony. The big, the big. So those are the three things. So the question is, well, again, the small plates were First Nephi through Words of Mormon. How did they get the plates of Nephi? And that's what we're going to talk about in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you got to be patient. So where do they go? What? You can. I'll tell you what. Here's here's a clue. Yeah. If you read DNC carefully, DNC ten carefully, in conjunction with DNC nine, because remember in DNC nine the Lord said, "I have other records that I'll help you give you power to translate." Yeah. The DNC said. 10 says, you've got to translate these other records. This is the kind of fulfillment of that. Yeah, totally. Fulfillment of, uh, of the Section 9 right. promise. Section 9 kind of gave them a hint. If Joseph and Oliver were paying attention, mm -hmm. <laughs> they would know that new additional records, other records were coming. And then the very next revelation tells them what those other records were. It's the plates of Nephi. Yeah. But it, if you read just those scriptures, you can't tell how they got them. So we'll talk about that. So, in two how, weeks. so what happened to the original 
set of plays. We'll talk about that in two weeks, too. All right. That's a <laughs> okay. little teaser here, folks. So yeah, so can... hang in there. Be patient. <laughs> study study so, uh, up yeah. on DNC 10, and you might be able to figure it out. But if yeah. not, we'll help you in two weeks. You bet. All, All right. right. Well, th thank you, Jonathan, for sharing sure. those, this the amazing insights and information about this. This is really important, folks, because we need to know where this all came from and how it went down. But also, this, this also has real implications for um, things like the Hill Cumorah. Where is yeah, the Hill Cumorah? Totally. Yeah. Um, where is the repository? Yep. yep. And, uh, and and we're going to get into that here uh, in two weeks from now. Two weeks from and, now. And uh, so we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Yep. Okay. All right, everybody. So, we'll see you then. So again, so uh, please give us a like if you are enjoying these uh, these podcasts. We're trying to keep them a little bit shorter. The last year kind of went way long, right. sometimes two or three hours even sometimes. We're trying to keep these into a well, and we, we have links for additional and information. then additional links. So that's why you know check out the links um, after this and on, also on the websites. Yep. And uh, and we will see you next week. Okay. Thank you, everybody. The days ahead are sobering and challenging. and will demand the faith, prayers, and loyalty of every American. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the dangers, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously. As the ancient apostle declared, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Our challenge is to keep America strong and free. Strong socially. Strong economically. And above all, strong spiritually. If our way of life is to endure, there is no other way. With over 700 videos that are inspiring, you can fortify your family and friends by putting on the Armor of Light at bookofmormonevidencestreaming.com.